This presentation looks at to the origin of some of the earliest settlers in Britain, now known as the Cymry, now represented by many of the Welsh people. 19th century historian Jonathan Williams states the first settlers of Britain came from the summer country, a country situated between the Exchini and the Caspian Seas. That's the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. From the 7th to the 4th century BC, says Giza, a new population spread over Gaul, that's France, they call themselves Chimerians. The Greeks placed them on the western bank of the Black Sea, and from one of these tribes, and the name of its chieftain, called Prid or Pridden Britain, got its name, which is kept to today. The lawyer and historian Sharon Turner, uh, 19th century, in his History of the Anglo-Saxons, first published in 1799, has something to say about these early settlers. The most ancient inhabitants of our island, he says, were called Cymry. The Welsh, who are the descendants, have always called themselves Cymry. The Cymry of Britain originated from the continental Cimmerians. The Cimmerians, seeming to be Gauls or Celts, under a different name, says uh, the antiquarian license, it is observable that the Welsh, a Celtic people, still call themselves Cymru. So who were the Cimmerians? Sometimes spelled with a C, sometimes with a K. We know they were skilled craftsmen. Uh, skilled archers and uh, had uh, a culture. The Cambridge Ancient History, Volume 11, describes something of Homer's Odyssey. In the Odyssey, the poet has heard of a mysterious people called the Cimmerians, who live on the threshold of the underworld, wrapped in mist and clouds, and the sun never looks down upon them with his rays, either at morn or eventide, but deadly night, the people whose name was thus first made known to literature. Another Russian writer says, We hear in the Odyssey of a people called Cimmerians, who lived in a mythical country of fog and darkness on the shores of the Akshini, the Black Sea. The writer of the passage may well have heard of, a real, of real Cimmerians inhabiting the northern shore of the Black Sea in the Asia of the 7th century BC. Cyclopaedia Britannica states, The Cimmerians, this is the real Cimmerians of course, not those of the poet Homer. The Cimmerians assaulted Urartu, that's Armenia, 714 BC. 695 BC con conquered Phrygia. In 652 BC, after taking Sardis, they achieved the height of their power. Well, that may be the case, but Strabo, the Greek geographer, philosopher, and historian, also has something to say about these people. The Cimmerians, he says, made an incursion as far as Aeolia and Ionia. The Magnesians were utterly extirpated by the Tereus, a Cimmerian tribe, so they went even as far as Greece in his uh, um, research. So the Cimmerians then pushed further west through Greece. But where did the Cimmerians actually originate? We need to look at some of the Assyrian texts discovered by Austrian Henry Layard in the 19th century and he found over 28,000 inscriptions, mostly on clay tablets, some referring to the Cimmerians in the Assyrian province of Mane, which is in Media, in northwest Iran. And so in northwest Iran, pushing up into Armenia and the Caucasus is the very first earliest reference to the Cimmerians in the 7th century BC.
correspondence of the Assyrian king Sargon. The Cimmerian king has departed from Media and entered into Armenia. Recorded on a clay tablet in the British Museum, K485. Another of the tablets mentions the Urartian or the Armenian king and his troops having been utterly defeated by these Cimmerians. Tablet K0081. Yet another translated tablet tells us, I ask you, Samas, great lord, says the Assyrian king, whether the troops of the Cimmerians will go to the district of some region. Name unreadable. So it's a people that were in Assyria, but on the move. Dr. Christensen, a Danish linguist, uh, says, the Cimmerians were in fact, she says, identical with the Israelites, deported from northern Israel after the fall of Samaria in 722 BC. We read that on page one of her dissertation on who were the Cimmerians and where did they come from. She goes on further to state in page 126, the Israelites deported from Bith Humri of the house of Omri are identical with the Gemara or the Cimmerians of the Assyrian sources. She has reason to believe, come to this conclusion. In the early history of Syria and Palestine by Peyton, we read Omri, one of the kings of Israel, brought the northern kingdom to such a position of influence such as it never enjoyed before. The fame of his power spread as far as Assyria, where Israel received the name of Bith Humri. Well, that corresponds to the scripture references in two kings, where the king of Assyria took Samaria, carried Israel away into Assyria, placed them in Hela, Habor, and the rivers of Gozan, and the cities of the Medes. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. But then in the 14th year of King Hezekiah did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah and took them. We have an obelisk in the British Museum. On this monument, the Assyrians referred to the Israelites as Qumri, derived from Omri, the Israelite king who founded the northern capital of Samaria. On this monument we see a panel and the text describes how Jehu, king of Israel, pays tribute to the king of Assyria. The inscription reads, Jehu, son of Comre. So the Israelites in the north particularly were referred to as Comre. Again, a tablet which describes the annals of Tiglath Pileser the second of Assyria also refers to Israel as Qumri. Sargon the second, another inscription, 8th century BC, king of Assyria also refers to Israel as the Qumri. Now across in northwest Iran is Beistan. At Behistun, there's a massive rock face on the mountain side, northwest Iran. On that rock face are carvings that were made at the time of the uh, Persian occupation of that area. There are inscriptions on this rock face, together with sculptures. Henry Rawlinson was an army officer, politician and orientalist, 
and in 1827 he was sent to Persia where he transcribed some of the inscriptions on the Bayeston rock in Iran. The picture there taken from a Swedish journal shows how risky was this uh, research that he took, undertook. Rawlinson stated we have reasonable grounds for regarding the Gemara or the Chimerians who first appeared on the confines of Assyria and Media in the 7th century BC as identical with the Beth Khumri or the House of Omri of Samaria or the ten tribes of the House of Israel. So he arrives at the same conclusion as uh, did later uh, Dr. Christensen. Through the prophet Amos God had said that he would sift the House of Israel among all nations such as corn is sifted in a sieve but that they would not be lost to him although they would be lost to history both biblical and secular. According to the 5th century BC Jewish scribe Esdras, or Ezra the deported Israelites migrated as a great multitude across the upper Euphrates. This corresponds very accurately to the description of the movement of the Chimerians. The 1st century AD Jewish historian Josephus records the non, these non-Jewish tribes of Israel beyond the Holy Land as an immense multitude not to be estimated by numbers. So in his day he was aware of these Israelite tribes the Jewish Encyclopedia, volume 12, two, page 249 states, The Israelites who were subjugated by the Assyrian power, these were not Jews, they disappear from the pages of history. The scriptures speak of a future restoration of Israel. The ten tribes are certainly in existence. Obviously, they must exist under a different name. The Jewish scholar, Dr. Moses Edry, a member of the Talmud Academies, Academies of London and Amsterdam, Professor of Modern and Oriental Languages at Cambridge University, has something to say about the so-called Lost Tribes of Israel. Uh, looking at um, the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament, he says the prophet Isaiah declares that the Israelites shall come from the Isles of the Sea. In reality, the ten tribes separated from the rest not only inhabited places very remote from the Holy Land, but are concealed in the extremities of the earth. Another well-known Jewish scholar, philosopher, astronomer, and also a physician, uh, Maimon it is, uh, stated that he believed that the ten tribes to be in various parts of West Europe. So the Israelite Qumri or Chimerians migrated west, curiously in the same direction as the early spread of the Christian faith. Reaching into Western Europe, France, Spain and Britain. Interesting to note the writings of uh, uh, Dr. Joseph Barber Lightfoot. English theologian, he was Bishop of Durham, chaplain to Queen Victoria and also canon of St Paul's Cathedral. He wrote up his epistle to the Galatians or St Paul's ep epistle to the Galatians. There is every reason then, he says, for believing that the Galatian settlers were genuine Celts and of the two main subdivisions into which modern philologists have divided the Celtic, Celtic race, they seem rather to have belonged to the Cumric of which the Welsh are the living representatives. Thus in the age when St Paul preached, a native of Galatia could speak the same language as the Welsh. Curious also that the Apostle Paul, when writing to the Galatians in his epistle, assumed that the Cymru Galatians knew all about Israel's history. There's a quote from Galatians 4. Abraham had two sons, one by a bondmaid, the other a free woman. Now we are the sons of the free woman. The Bible prophet Isaiah foresaw the lost tribes of Israel migrating into a land of darkness. Is this the dark Cimmerian regions as described in Homer's Odyssey? 
They shall look unto the earth, and behold trouble and darkness, dimness of, of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. But the countries occupied by the Cimmerians were amongst the first to receive the light of the gospel of salvation from Christ's apostles. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. This is regarded as a messianic uh, prophecy to do with the arrival of the Christian faith. The early British historian Gildas described the arrival of the Christian gospel to the Celtic Cymru Britons in the first century AD. He states how oh, that to our island, stiff with cold, the true sun, even Christ, first yields his rays. I mean his precepts, he says, in the latest days as we know of Tiberius, while well, Tiberius died in 37 AD. So the Christian gospel arrived here early in the first century. So such is the illustrious origin and indeed the Christian heritage of the Welsh Cymru people today whose ancestors were some of the earliest settlers of Britain. <laughs>